You're listening to the Getting Social Podcast, a keep it real type podcast where we discuss entrepreneurship, marketing, and all kinds of social topics. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Getting Social Podcast. I am your host, Jeff Palacard, and this is episode number 19. The idea behind the Getting Social Podcast was about creating a platform that would not only allow me to express myself and raise awareness on certain issues, but also to help others do the same, especially entrepreneurs, professionals, leaders of the community, and so on. Today's guest is Alex Delena. He's a friend and colleague of mine. And uh, he's a CPA and uh, what I call a badass. One of the main reasons is because he has four daughters that he is homeschooling and he's been doing it for about almost three years. When he first told me about this, I could not believe it. I did not even know that homeschooling was legal. I know it's kind of ignorant of my part, but I just didn't know what the rules were. So he explained it to me and I was curious since. And that conversation happened probably over, I would say, almost two years ago. And here we are two years later on this podcast discussing homeschooling. And the reason why this is important is because of, I think, the world's climate right now makes us think of other alternatives. So why is this topic so important to me? Well, I got some news for you. I am going to announce publicly today that my wife and I are expecting number three. Although that was something that we were always open to, but considering the world's climate today, it took me as a shock. And it also took me on a roller coaster of emotions. And the reason why I was so emotional about, about that news is because I feel like today's world is in a very difficult place. Let me just put it that way. So this is me just being super open. And uh, like we say on the podcast, it's a keep it real type of podcast. So why not? You know, so this is the first time I actually talk about this. But anyway, um, we will talk about some other things uh, during this podcast uh, with the focus of homeschooling for the most part and seeing how what it's about, you know, how you could achieve that. What are the pros? What are the cons? And also family dynamics uh, where Alex explains, you know, basically his routine. So without further ado, it's time to get social. Alex, first of all, thank you so much for uh, joining us here. I got you on the, the Getting Social podcast because you're a badass. I only invite badasses to my to my podcast, by the way. Like, it seems like you're always under control. And I, I want you to share with us in terms of, like, your daily routine. Uh, I know that a lot of times, you know, people like you have a routine. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. But that basically sets the tone from the morning all the way up to the nighttime before you go to bed. Is there anything specific that you do that you want to share with us in terms of what your routine is like? I wish I could tell you that I had a real regimented. Uh, <laughs> uh, <struggle>. <laughs> I, I'm not the most structured person. I work better in a framework. I work better in a framework that allows me to kind of, you know, incorporate a little bit of, you know, like, like openness to, to the direction of what a day is going to look like. And as much as I, I appreciate what you said, there are points to this day, to this year, that I don't feel I have everything, uh, it, you know, in, in the palm of my hands, like 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 firing on all cylinders. There are little hiccups that happen. There are, there are times you just kind of like just get overwhelmed with one thing or the other. Usually for me, it's when, when work starts just being too much of a demand. And you make it work, but it, it comes at a heavy price. Your sleep, sometimes the time you can spend with your spouse, with your, with your children. So there are definitely are times of overwhelm, but I think that for me, what I've learned, and especially in these last few years, is that you can't sacrifice sleep so that you can be this big producer, go get her, go get her, go get her. Sometimes you start listening to these motivational uh, speakers and stuff, and they've got great messages. Eric Thomas is one that I love. And sometimes there's just, it's too gung-ho. And what they talk about is like, man, forget sleep. You got to just go get it. Hmm. Um, so for me, an element of a good day is trying to get my seven, eight hours of sleep if it's the weekend, try to get a small nap in at some point, uh, an element of a good day. And here's where I also say framework, because it's not like it always happens at a certain time is trying to get in a good training session. You know, these are just at least personal things for me that kind of help restore me. And that could be something in the morning, a little quiet time in the morning, a little something, or it could be 
during work, uh, uh, during my lunch break, or after work, after getting home and spending some time with the family, a nightcap. Mm-hmm. So those are two important things, that at least for me, kind of like to, to, to feel like you've given yourself a little bit of you time. Um, other very important elements of the day is that knowing that no matter how, what time you have to wake up in the morning, that you're able to be back home and be there at least for dinner and spend some time connecting with, with my daughters, you know, and with my wife. I think if those things happen, no matter how much stress is going on at work, I'm, you know, number one, rested so that I can have a clear frame of mind to kind of deal with the set challenges and the stresses that will unfold today that I didn't know you were going to call me with this issue or your, you know, you know, your world is ending. If I don't get this done for you by next Friday, like all these deadlines get thrown upon you. And if on top of the fact that you're overloaded, you're also under rested, it's not a good combination. So if you take time to kind of restore yourself every evening, get some good, deep, proper sleep, you kind of wake up and say, Hey, today's a brand new day for me. Today's a, today's a brand new day. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that a little quiet time in the mornings before you leave. And I would say also try to get into work early, at least for me, trying to get into work early on a consistent basis so that I have a little time before the day starts to kind of strategize what stones are, are going to move today. You know, if, if I, if I can incorporate those, that start to the day, well rested, get in a little bit early, a training session at some point and dinner with the family and some connecting time before going to sleep. I mean, for me, those are my elements of a complete day. Not every day works like that, but when it does, that's, that's the magic. And when you say getting to work early, what, what, what do you mean by then, by that? What, what's early for you? Usually between like the six and seven is usually a good time. You're, um, you're at when I'm at off six season or seven? Right now, yeah, between six and seven. I, yeah, and when I, can, when I can do that, you know, I can usually leave by six o'clock if it's not busy. So I put in a nice good 12 hours, but I didn't take it so much time away from the family get home by six o'clock. That's more than ample time for dinner, you know? So that, that is, is when do you work out? That's ideal. Oh, if I work out in the morning, I'll get up probably like at five o'clock and I'm able to do something for half hour or so before I take a shower and get ready to go. And usually if I work out, it's more lately, it's been in the evenings. So I'll come home either. I won't eat right away, but I'll sit down with the family while they eat. And then I'll get my, my session in usually I, I would say after the kids go to sleep, but the girls usually stay up with me. And sometimes even my little ones will kind of like jump in and they'll, and they'll, they'll be there with me because I train at home. I don't, I, I think I told you, I, I, yeah. I, I do it at the house. I have a set up outside. I have um, these gymnastic high bars so you can do all kinds of interesting things. I leave, I leave those tools uh, in the living room, like off to the wall. So it doesn't really bother anybody. I got little 20 pound dumbbells underneath the bed, uh, underneath the couch. You know, so it's like you just keep tools kind of lying around and you could just get a little session. I've, 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 I've heard about my wife's day and I'm like busting out bicep curls. I, w- I want to get into another topic with you here. We had a conversation about family and homeschooling. And today, obviously, for, for different reasons, many of us are faced with having to do that or at least some version of that. Can you tell us why you had you had taken that decision then and what advice would you give parents today as to how can they homeschool their kids? Or even if it's just virtual learning, what advice could you give us? Well, first of all, you know, take time to be alone in your own headspace and think about what that commitment would look like for you and what it would feel like for you. Take time and remind yourself that what other times in your life have you taken upon something that's been challenging or scary, intimidating and how you rose to the occasion. And so a lot of times the barrier is, well, first of all, there may not be no need, right? Because you may go to a great school um, and you love it there and your children love it there and you love the program, you love everything. And so there's no need to contemplate to your point today. Our world is very different. And now a lot of us have to contemplate at least some version of it because this goes beyond the educational aspect or beyond anything else. Now you may not feel comfortable with your child being, you know, exposed to possibly getting sick or just in these uncomfortable environments that kids are, you know, walking around in unnaturally having to be all covered up. Children don't, don't know about that or want to, you know, be into that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just an unpleasant environment. And again, we're all trying to do the best we can and, you know, including people out there with, with you know, with, with the mandates and, and, and with, you know, how we're going to best protect and go through this process. But for a myriad of reasons, we now may find ourselves that this might be a decision that we have to consider. 
And so again, what I would say is take time to kind of like frame for yourself the possibility and, and the expectation that you can take on this challenge if it's something that calls to you. And so for us, a couple of years ago, actually, is when we started like two and a half years ago, had nothing to do with anything that's going on today. And also we were, we liked the school very much that my two oldest daughters were in. My, my oldest daughter was in fourth grade and my youngest daughter finished second grade. They were both in the magnet program at a good school, good public school here in uh, Miami. And the part that really started this process for us was just how much homework our daughters had. Like to the point where I come home after those long days that, you know, we, we talked about a little bit and there's still homework going on for a first grader and a second, you know, and a third grader and then a fourth grader. And it like, it like, it was like that for my, my, my oldest daughter, Maya, first grade homework, like crazy, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, a lot, a lot levels that you don't remember and you don't recollect. And here you are a successful entrepreneur growing businesses, you know, diversifying yourself, creating things like an artist. Look, and do you remember? Cause I don't levels of homework like that, like every day, you know? So that was something that was kind of like, this is the only time they have to be children and we're working them to what end and for what purpose. That's not really what learning is all about. Think about it. The process of learning, you know, and especially you're reminded of this, we're reminded of this when we finished college. I have a master's degree. I didn't get my master's degree all of a sudden. And the partners in my firm are like, oh, you're, you're, that's it. You're ready to be partner here. No, I didn't get it all of a sudden. It's like, oh, now we're going to double your pay. You know, you don't learn everything you need to know, learn in school. What happens is you have to get past certain milestones. You have to demonstrate your capacity, your ability to complete this engagement, to follow instruction. All these very important things happen. But hopefully the most important thing that's happened in school is you fell in love with learning. You learned how to be a good student. You learned how to read something, not understand what the hell it says, and read it again and again and again, and talk to yourself and ask yourself the question and do the workbook assignment and do whatever, and you start drilling down this concept. But the semester passes, the year passes, and maybe you're not there anymore, you know? And so for us, it was kind of like, here's this opportunity with our children who are just being so overworked with school and their child is only, their child is only this little period right here. Do we leave them here when we can clearly see that there's kind of like a disconnect for us and also for them? Or do we try this journey of homeschooling and like, there's an alternative world out there, you know? And so it was something that was calling to my wife. We talked about it. I have a tremendous amount of respect for my wife, Crystal. And when she was telling me that, that this is something that she really wanted to try, I told her, you know, honey, I support you 100%. I support, I don't, I don't know exactly what this is all going to look like now. So, you know, I knew that she, and it took some time and research and so forth. But when she made that leap, I told her I supported her and we asked our two daughters, we needed a buy-in. And so we, we planted the seed. We proposed the idea that after this year, we're thinking about homeschooling. We left in the last few months of the year thinking about it. And then over the summer, I remember we had a conversation. It was like, you know, I came home for lunch that day. And, you know, we were kind of trying to decide because we have to give our letter of intent to the school. And we asked the girls, you know, so what's it going to be? Do you want to try this journey and see what it can be? Or, you know, is it maybe just not right for you? And, and you know, there was, there was some tears and, and like, you know, like tears of like, you know, nervousness of excitement. I gave a little bit more of a heartfelt speech, to be honest with you. And, uh, and they were on board, you know, we all hugged and we're like, man, let's do it. So it's been about two and a half years in this journey, in this process. And I think that if it's something that's calling for you, do your homework on it. Remote learning through the school system. Homework? Is very no, but I thought you hated homework. No, I'm but saying I, you gotta, I, I'm just, I'm just joking around. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have, you have, you have to look it up. It's, it's, a, it's a big thing. It's, 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 it's a big thing. Even right down to curriculum, right, Jeff? Because when you go to school, all the books are there for you. If, and, and if you do remote learning, you also have the curriculum. When you do homeschooling kind of independently, there's all these different learning resources, some that are more geared towards writing, some that are special for math, science, so forth. So it's like you, you kind of put, pull like a composite. And there's also different teaching styles. You know, they're, they're, it's, 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 it's a very interesting world. And I, I just feel validated, you know, each time I come home and I see they're doing something, it's like some kind of a project, some kind of a collaboration 
or they're having a discussion about something, or sometimes I'll come home and they have an audio book on and the audio book is going on. Someone else is doing something else. And later there's a discussion. And like every day is like, a, there's something cool going on pretty much every day. You know, uh, this morning I left to, to the office later today. Cause you know, I'm past the, all my craziness. I got to work today about eight 30, but I woke up, came downstairs. Maybe it was like seven 30 in the morning or so. And my, my daughter, Leah, my second oldest, was downstairs and she was working on her math by herself. She already got up, you know, and she just came downstairs and she's working on her math workbook, you know, before everyone else came downstairs to start making breakfast and stuff. So it's cool. It's kind of like that, that you can make school and, and learning be something that, that is in, filled with enjoyment and wonder as opposed to like, oh, I got to do this. Like, sometimes you get that, but it's very rare. More, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, what else is going on? And there, there's also a lot of self-direction that happens eventually. Every person has their, their different personalities, have their different right. strengths and yeah. we- weaknesses. So obviously, the learning cannot be something that's out of a box and then offered to everyone and then for everyone to uh, right. adapt to it the same way. It doesn't work that way. The school system is not perfect, and we've been struggling here in the United States in in my opinion, providing adequate education to, to, to children and having a system that works, you know, and also that prepares our children for the real world. My son is now in right. virtual school and I see him very, very engaged, actually. I mean, I was very, I was pleasantly surprised seeing him, you know, raising his hand and talking to the teacher, asking questions and saying like, hey, you know, this is not what you said yesterday and stuff like that. I'm like, man, this is great. Like, you know, at least he's, He's engaging as if he were like in a classroom and not like you, like, like you said, I don't think it's a normal environment for kids also going in, a, in, in school right now with, you know, masks and some schools have glass in between them and they don't even, they don't even have right. lunch together anymore. They don't have recess. They, they stay in one yeah, class man. for the most part. So all of these things are challenges that kids, you know, it's unfair to them, you know, um, it's, a tough, it's tough, you know, but the other side of the coin for homeschooling to me is also interacting with other kids. So I want to ask you about that also. How are you guys dealing with that in terms of your daughters interacting? Well, aside from interacting with each other, because you have at least, they have at least three <laughs> best friends. <laughs> each one. Think, man, if you don't invite me to your house, all we're missing is a couple balloons. It's a party, bro. You know, and it's kind of like that. Even, even in those days that they were in school, I would always tell them, your sister, your sister, your sister, your sister, your sister first. And sometimes they would bicker with each other and little things. And, you know, and, and, and I would come back and tell them, Hey, you know, if when you see like there's play dates and friends are over and then like, maybe sometimes my oldest wasn't paying as much attention to her, her sister, who's two years, you know, her, her, her younger, two and a half years younger. And, you know, you see my daughter, Leah, it's happened, you know, it's happened a number of times, you know, back in, back in the days, many years ago, um, that kind of like, she's kind of like left out or felt excluded. And like each time it's like you remind them, hey, these friends that you have, wonderful kids. But the reality is probably none of them that you know today or that you're going to know five years from now, who you know 20, 30, and 40 years from now. But I'll tell you what, as long as you're here and as long as Leah's here and Nina's here and Emma's here, they're going to be your sisters for the rest of your life. And a sister could just be something that's a title because you're my blood and we're brothers, but we don't call each other. We don't spend time together. We're brothers, man, but we're, we're not really brothers. And so a sister can be like that too, just the title figure. Or it could be something where you invest your energy and your time and you have a best friend, a rock, a, 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 someone who's going to be there for you for the rest of your life, but you have to nourish that relationship. And so it's not like I would say that verbatim to them, but I would find a way, even though I'm talking to an eight-year-old or seven-year-old or a nine-year-old, whatever, I would find a way to really communicate that and bring it back, bring it back every time you kind of see. So, so yeah, we don't have that luxury of having 20, 30 children that the kids can be hanging out with in school. And, you know, I, I would say recess, but recess doesn't exist anymore. That's when we were kids. Um, hmm. So as far as social interactions, you lose a step but you also have the opportunity to kind of number one, cherish the friendships and the outings that you do have. Cause we still have those are just not maybe as frequent, but number two, and probably number one, I would say is that you have the opportunity to dive into number one and number one, that's your sisterhood. You know, that's like what, what, what's happening here in this house where we honor one another, where there's a disagreement, 
We can stop. We can talk about it. You know, we can talk about our emotions. You're having a bad day. That's fine. You're entitled to that. You can have some space, you know, whatever. But it's like you have the time to not have all these other external vibrations and not for nothing. There's a lot of great moms and dads out there. You know, like when you said you're going to be a, a pops now, it's like you can just see that, that, that beautiful smile of yours and you see your, 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 your family. It's like, bro, this is a good family. No matter how challenging this is for Jeff and Soraya, it's going to be it's going to be good. It's going to be good. But unfortunately, not every family is like that. And so sometimes in, in a school setting, you deal with some damaged goods. You know, you deal with the bully. You deal with the kid that's showing the curse words. You deal with mm. the kids in the bus who's got the freaking phone. They're showing videos that, sh- that little children shouldn't be looking at. Mm. And, you know, that don't exist in my house. You know, because if there's an element in the house, it's because you put it in there. And so I'm very careful, like, you know, my wife and I, we're careful, we're conscious, you know, the kind of music that you play, mm. if, you know, what shows are on TV, how much TV is being played, you know, all of that good stuff. And there's no little sneak videos of Miley Cyrus, you know, wrecking ball on a school bus, which <laughs> happened to us actually, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, but to a seven-year-old, but to a seven-year-old, my brother, with, you know, the problem that you have going back, I do have four daughters. I was never looking for the boy. Raising a, a little woman, you know, raising a, a, a little girl, is a very special kind of honor, you know, for a man, I think. And especially a man that always loved women, right? You know, it's like, now it's like, dude, now you are the dad. And, you know, as the dad, it's like, you want to create an environment that your young child, your daughter can flourish and thrive in and not be infected with other people's toxicity, other elements that just don't belong in the life of a child. Eventually you're going to grow up and you're going to hear the curse words. Maybe one day I'm talking and I'm animated and I might say a bad word. You know, uh, eventually you're going to hear whatever music you want to hear, the movies, all it's all out there. That's fine. But certain ages, certain stages don't need to have that going on. And the truth is when you're out in school and you're mixing with all kinds of people, stuff like that happens. And sometimes it happens a lot. And you hear a lot of times, oh, wait, wait till they turn 12, wait till they turn 18. It's all going to change. What's changing a lot of times is the people that are influencing your kids. That's why all of a sudden your little 14 year old doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Why else did you change? Are, are you not spending time with your son anymore playing ball every Sunday like you wanted to? Are you not, you know, having those wonderful talks after dinner? No, man, you probably didn't change at all. A lot of times some of these good families lose their kids. Like they lose the, the, the closeness of their relationship, not because of magic, not because of a coincidence, but because of the elements that they're hanging out with. So that's another thing that it's not about that I'm creating a bubble or like being, you know, I, I don't know exactly how I want to frame it, but my point is, is that another very powerful element of homeschooling is your opportunity to create a good, wholesome environment. And you can bring in the other things that are the real world stuff and real world issues in little by little, but they don't have to be inundated by it or surprised with it. But, oh, hey, look at this. That doesn't go on here. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that, that is another, I think, real powerful element. Man, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I think the part about exposure to other kids, you know, and, 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 and you know, dangerous things. I think the influence of kids, of bullies, of, uh, of like you said, you know, watching stuff on, on their phones that are not appropriate for kids are yeah, super, yeah, super dangerous, man. I think that's one of the things why you see a shift in society now also is because our kids have been exposed to that. When I was growing up, it was less, it was less of a problem because we didn't have phones. You know, we didn't have any of that. Right. Now, you know, you see kids, you know, watching stuff, you know, at eight, nine, 10 years old and the music and the message that they get from TV and shows and, and the celebrities and all that nonsense by being exposed to it. They think it's basically the norm. I want to thank you, man, for, for accepting uh, to uh, be on the show once again and sharing some of that with us. You were, you were here just for many reasons, because like I said earlier, I think you're a badass. I think you're a great person, a great father, a great professional. I appreciate what you stand for. And, 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 uh, and thank you again. Thank you, Jeff. It's been a real pleasure, man. And, and the feelings mutual, man. I have a tremendous amount of respect for you also. And I, I enjoyed the whole process, man. And, and you're, you're great with, with getting your guests to relax. We did the warm up. We had that nice little intro conversation. I thought we were live. I'm like, man, Jeff hit me out the gate. No, that's you great. Already fired you, up you, get, you get like warmed up. I was recording some of it too, so maybe I'll edit that in. <laughs> Very Thank cool, you. man. Thank All right, you, Jeff. Bro. My best to you and the wife you. and the family, man. 
Likewise, man. Congratulations. Man. All right, man. Have a good night, man. We'll talk soon. Take care, brother. All right, bro. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Getting Social Podcast. If you've made it that far, it means you probably liked it. In that case, leave us a review, subscribe, and please share it with a friend. Thank you.